I would say the show has definitely evolved. In a, in a weird way, I think we've come full circle. This is a show that started out very much about um, a girl who finds out that aliens exist in the world and how it rocks her world and changes her. And I think th through the second season, we got very much into the um, sci-fi aspect of the show, the mythology aspect of the show, um, where they came from, fighting battles from where they were. and. I thought for this season what I really felt I wanted to do was bring the show back to an emotional show, to be about the arcs of these people. The thing that I've always loved most about the show is that we see these aliens as almost more human than humans. It lost what was so amazing about it and what, what everybody was drawn to it for, which was the mix of this beautiful relationship between Max and Liz and it getting, you know, these outside forces, but it was more like I'm in love, but I'm an alien. And then all of a sudden it became like, I'm an alien and I have a girlfriend, you know? It was like, so it totally took a turn that not everybody was too excited about. Now, after seeing one season, the first season that was based heavily on the romance and second season, which was based heavily on the science fiction, they know which aspects of each work. And I think that beginning of this season, well, everything that we've shot so far, they've done a really good job of working hard to combine the two. Voila! M&M, Tabasco Swirl cookies, and I made them all by myself. A care package. Man, Max is so spoiled. <laughs> what we wanted to do with this first episode is to put uh, Max and Liz at the center of the episode and their relationship at the center of it, because that's sort of where it all began, and what I feel that relationship is sort of the heart of the show to me. At the end of the last season, Tess has left the planet with Max's unborn son, and Max vows that he will do anything to save his son and find him. And in the beginning of this first episode, we find him on the journey to do that, and Liz is along for the ride. You know, Max and Liz are together, which I think is going to be incredibly satisfying to the fans of the show who've been waiting for this for a long time. And um, there's a little bit of Bonnie and Clyde in them as they basically pursue um, trying to communicate with Max's son. Down, 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 down. It's been three years. I think that Max started out as, as one thing, somewhat innocent and, and a little naive. And, and, and he's been through a lot. And I think people have been through a lot with him. And he's, he's, he's not jaded, but I think he's a little more, um, a little more world-worn. Let me see hands. He got any powers for this? With the death of her friend, she really had to stand up and take a stand for something. And that's when she started getting confidence and believing herself again. And that's sort of where uh, the show picks up third season. And you see that she's finally regained her spirit. She's, she and Max have gotten back together and they're rebelling and sort of just taking the world by storm together and creating a storm. Look, and Max, I know what we did is totally, totally wrong and completely legal, but I just left it, you know? In a million years. In one million years, did you ever think? Yeah, that's in the trees. You want to take a mulligan? No, I don't do drugs. I sort of look at this as the year that Roswell comes of age. So we're getting ourselves out of the high school, we're expanding the canvas of the show, taking ourselves into new territory and allowing ourselves to sort of play a little bit more um, sort of adult themes. Isabel, hey, uh, this is Jesse Ramirez from my office. We met at the company. Picnic, that's right, nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. It is introduced in this episode as well, Isabel's new love interest who um, 
is a very, very serious love interest in somebody she's been seeing all summer but nobody knows about because he works in her father's office and is a bit older. Not a lot, just a little. So she's like 22, 23? 26. 26? That's a problem. So, uh, you ready for a little, uh... <laughs> Thank you for this meeting, Mr. Ramirez. No problem, Isabel. And I think people are gonna see how much they're in love with each other as the, as the, the, the storyline goes on. I mean, it's really real. It's not an infatuation. It's not something that's, you know, uh, kind of spur of the moment, let's just be in love kind of thing, because we're young. I think, I think these characters are really, really in love with each other. They really appreciate each other for who they are. Whoops. I don't believe this. You are not going to tell me what you said. You know, this is so indicative. Shut up. The character I play is Michael. He's changed, actually, over the three years. He seems to be becoming the, the, the normal kind of human one of the group you know, settling down. Not exactly with a family or anything like that, but he seems to have, you know, gotten priorities straight and stuff like that, so. Is this some deranged sex thing? I got a job. Security guard? Gotta start somewhere. This season he settled down to get a job and he's kind of uh, learned his place on Earth. That's kind of the direction he's headed in from you know, being the hot head of the group to kind of being the uh, the one with the more cooler head. Okay, so technically I stole it, but they didn't know that. Right. Carl fired us because he only thought that one of us took it. But you did take it. Why can't these aliens ever get in trouble somewhere decent? Like Graceland, or Tahoe, or New Orleans. It's Maria no. DeLuca. She, in a year, is basically a different person. She was kind of ditzy and like, eh, you know, and. Now she's the one who, you know, she's very on top of it. She's very, like, brassy, very, you know, still the best friend and the girlfriend and all that, but, you know, is, and still comical, but in a different way. She's a little more in charge. Okay, first of all, I have some alien green lime pie for you. Oh, my God, Maria, down. you, you are a goddess. You know, if you were a boy, I would... Okay, I don't, no, don't go there, girlfriend. How could you make Liz hold a gun? It's kind of fun because you go on these chases with these characters and you're finding the clues and you're figuring it out and then there's like the romance and you know why aren't you paying attention to me you know like all the normal feelings that you have on a day-to-day -day basis with a human that you have feelings for and each one of us are all involved in relationships and then we go through these huge struggles together and you see us like figure everything out and everyone like one member is doing this thing and everyone's doing this and you sort of as an audience, or like picking a character and you're like you know, hoping that they're gonna figure it out and it sort of becomes like a little chase. And uh, it's, it's great when you watch these characters figure it out or you watch them fall because you know that they're not gonna give up. They're gonna continue the fight. You're free. We came here for a reason because your son is in trouble. And you need to go back and do what we came for. You know, see if your ship works. Come on, I don't want this to all be for nothing. I'm a member of that group of outsiders. I always knew I was different. And for a long, long time, all I wanted was to be another face in the crowd. But in the end, it wasn't possible. I think the show is still very much about finding your own identity. I think it's um, about self-discovery and, uh, and, and trying to find your place in the world and really just trying to find out who you are. So from now on, I'll just concentrate on being who I really am. Some of you might not like that. At the bottom of it all, it would seem that that more often than not, what we're about is the ability of people to tolerate people who are different. Um, I mean, we spent the first 
two years uh, with these hybrids, you know, these alien, half alien, half humans, running for their lives, uh, afraid of everything and everyone. And all the FBI wants to do is cut them up and put them in test tubes. And we as the audience have, you know, have gotten to know them and they're, uh, you know, <laughs> it's unthinkable. They're not, you know, you can't do that to, uh, to them. I don't care how different they are. When this is over, these creatures will never bother anyone ever again. I remember when we first showed the pilot episode to, you know, we had a screening of it when we were um, just about finished with it to get people's responses. And um, somebody came up to me and said that, you know, the thing that they notice is that every single character in the show is an outsider. It's not just the alien characters, it's even the sheriff who at that time was the antagonist and the guy who was trying to get them. He was also um, a, an outsider, an outsider society. And I think that that is, you know, to me, what is the, in a, in a weird way, what the draw is about the show, what the appeal is of the show, that these characters are all sort of searching for um, and striving for a way to fit in. Well, bridesmaids, of course, and since you guys... What would keep me involved as an audience member week to week would be something honest. And I know that's a, a word that everybody throws around, but it's, it's... Whenever I'm drawn to a show or drawn to an actor or drawn to a story, it's because it, it feels real. And it feels like it's either something I've experienced or understand or have known somebody who's gone through it. And, and I think that that's what this show is becoming more and more not you know trying to merge something that is almost you know that is unbelievable with something that is very real and honest and making it the whole thing the whole package a story that people almost can relate to aliens or no aliens i think the hope is that that people will watch these shows and and associate with some of the situations and and relate to the emotions that these these uh, characters go through and can maybe learn something from it and, and learn from um, the mistakes that we make because uh, they make a lot. I think it's about this group of people that are from all different aspects of the world and life that have come together to keep each other safe. And you see these people just throw themselves into the line of fire constantly to help one another out. And I think it's the bond that these people have created that makes the show special. Mm -hmm.